Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson and it's time for another tank update. The 210 gallon tank is killing and we're going to get to it in a minute. But first we need to talk about Facebook because I'm Scott Anderson, the original Mile High Reefer, but Facebook might tell you different. So what's the whole Facebook controversy that you may have seen online? Well, there are other people using my business name to try to get views and clicks for themselves. First guy we're going to talk about is named Mile High Reefer. I sent him a message telling him I own the name and to please stop using it. He said he would delete the page, which was completely unnecessary. All I'm looking for is a name change. But he also said that I needed to go F myself. I use that because, well, this is a family friendly show. So the guy didn't delete the page like he said. He didn't rename the page. It stays up. He's using my name, as far as I can tell, illegally. And it looks like this one may end up having to get attorneys involved in getting ugly. He's no longer responding to my messages and it looks like we might be getting attorneys on him. Guys are literally using my name to support his stuff. He knows he's doing it, so we'll see how this one goes. The next one is Mile High Reef. This is a guy who's running a business out of Denver. Looks like he's probably selling coral out of his tank. He's got a Twitch thing going. He's literally using my name and pretty much the same business model I have. So basically online content, doing the same thing I'm doing, trying to use my name to get views. He's not responding to any of my messages. So this one may be heading to the attorneys as well. So over the years, I've worked really hard to build Mile High Reefers into something you, the audience, can trust to give you good information, fun information, and show you some really cool fish and corals. And it's really important to me that when you Google Mile High Reefers, you find me, you find my page, you find my Facebook page, and a brand really is only as good as its name. So we'll see how this goes, but for now we have some people infringing on the brand. So if you are looking for Mile High Reefers on Facebook, it's Mile High Reefers, all one word. And right now, basically, Mile High Reefers on Facebook and Mile High Reefers on YouTube are the main things I do. So if it isn't those two specific things, it's a pretender to the throne. Now it's time for the part of the video we all actually want to see, and that's the tank update. I haven't done anything with sump and equipment for quite a while, so let's start there. We're in the furnace room, we're in the sump room, so it's going to be really noisy down here. The AC's running, it's about a 100 degree day today, so we're not shutting that off. And of course, we've got all the equipment that runs my big tank, so we have to deal with the noise. But the tank itself is doing pretty good. You've heard me talk in the past that I've had algae issues and that's really the main problem I'm having with the frag tanks. And to deal with that, basically I've got two tanks. One is blacked out with pieces of plastic. You can see them on top. So that's blacked out to kill algae off. And then the clean side has the coral in it. As Soon as algae starts growing on the clean side, I take all the coral out give them a quick scrub down with a toothbrush and move them to the dark tank and then move the panels from the dark tank over to the light one and switch it out. So basically we're just switching around darkness, but that way I always have an algae free frag tank ready to go. Pain in the butt, not ideal for the coral, but it's what we're doing just to take care of this algae. Um, I'm kind of at the point where the algae should be controllable, so I should really be looking at a couple of tangs at this point to help solve this. The big frag tank has that kind of green hair algae just up against the walls, but it's not too far out. Basically, my big urchins keeping it at bay. So while it's kind of ugly, this really is just a holding tank. We've got massive colonies of Monipora in here. We've got lots of leathers, just random stuff. Basically, if I don't know what to do with something, I throw it down here. Um, and really, I need to get rid of some of this Monipora. I mean, look at these colonies. They are absolutely nuts. 
The sump could use a bit of a clean. It's kind of ugly, but it's really not too bad. We've got some algae growing down there. If I was to do anything with this setup, I'd be upgrading those lights to get more algae. The other problem I'm having in here is I'm starting to get a little cyano. So it's probably time to dose a little more chemi clean. I don't have enough to dose this time. So it's probably time to order more. I'm still running the big Aquacy protein skimmer. It absolutely kills it. I love downdraft skimmers. I love external skimmers, especially for the way I run my system. They really work well. So if you saw those big colonies of Monipora, well, to keep those guys alive, I need a lot of calcium and my calcium reactor is just no longer keeping up with the demands of the frag tank and the tank upstairs. It's time to upgrade. I don't have the money in the budget right now. I budgeted for a camera, so I might have to change my budgeting around or figure something out here, but definitely I need to get a calcium reactor up. I'm running, I'm having to dose alkalinity and I'm talking huge amounts of alkalinity and I'm hanging out at like six alkalinity. I'm about 450 on my calcium, mag's about 1350, so it's bang on. I'm just using crazy elk right now. I really do just dose by the glug. It looks like I put a crazy amount of alkalinity in. It's not, it barely spikes my system. It takes so much elk when you have 450 gallons of water. So this is actually a pretty big tank update. We've got a lot to cover, so we're not gonna do a lot of B-roll, not a lot of beauty shots. We're gonna get it a lot done, a lot of content, talk about a lot of fish, a lot of coral, and try to put this together in a very expedited time frame. Um, with all the holidays we've had lately, and I've had a family member in the hospital, uh, my time's limited to work on this stuff. So I've been putting my time into the tank, into family, and I just haven't had time for video. So today we're gonna do a nice video of the tank, a fast one, because I don't even really have time to edit this, because we got another big video coming. All the fish are doing really well in here. I've got no complaints other than the one yellow tang is still thin, has H-L-L-E, and as we've talked about, that's just the way it's gonna be, unfortunately. My big green toadstool leather has developed a hole at its foot. I'm not sure what has caused this. I've been watching it, trying to figure it out. Um, I've seen that holes build up in the bottom of big leathers for several reasons. The first one is a lack of water flow. But this tank gets quite a bit in the evening. I've had this coral here for five or six years now, so I don't think that's gonna be the issue with it. The other reason I've seen it happen is bad shipping, but you know, there's no shipping damage here. This coral's been here for five years or so. The third reason this happens and why it probably happened in this tank is a pest. There are crabs that will bore inside these and it wouldn't surprise me if I had a hitchhiker come in as a little tiny baby, grew big and decided to make a home in this coral. Now, so far the coral seems healthy enough but this really could be a problem and it's really making me wanna just frag all my leather so I can fix this problem, make sure I don't have a pest in the tank and then since I'm gonna be at it, I might as well frag everything else. So like I said, lights just came on but when the lights are fully open, these two big leathers here go clear to the glass, they're overgrowing everything, they're growing into each other. So these ones would be good ones to frag, so I'd probably do discs or or circles around the outside of the disc. Take all of that outside material off on these two and the big guy on top and really frag that down. The big one on top, I can't pull out of the tank and this is the guy we need to frag to get take care of whatever's causing that hole. He is glue or he has grown on to the back wall. So with him growing on, I can't get him off without potentially ripping the coral in half. So if I'm gonna do that, I wanna be ready to frag, which I'm not. To frag this many leathers, I'm probably gonna end up with like 100 frags. It's gonna be a crazy amount. So I need to get some frag grippers, I need to get my tank set up downstairs to handle that many frags. It's just how it's gonna happen. These are big corals and they're gonna produce a ton of frags. So that's gonna be its own event, it's gonna be its own video but it needs to happen. Everything's just overgrown. 
and whatever that pest is, we need to deal with it. On the list of new corals, I got a new acro. This is the Immortal Tort. I got it from Jake Adams. I love this coral. I've got it mounted kind of right and back in this area where it can grow up and out. I really am running out of real estate, so I'm looking for these kind of outside the box places to place coral so I can add more pieces because at this point, I really am running out of room. This section right here with Pasolipora and Bird's Nest is getting overgrown. I have big plans for it. I've got another coral plant for this spot. I haven't received it yet, but once I get it, we will be redoing this whole spot, probably with different coral. We'll see how all this goes. There's a little coral warfare taking place. If you look up towards the top left, you're gonna see that orange looking chalice. That's Cherry Garcia. And if you look down below, the Monty looks pretty beat up. Yeah, that Cherry Garcia is sending out its sweeper tentacles doing massive damage to the Monty. But the Monty is big enough that at most we're gonna kill off that one little section. So I'm probably just gonna let it stay, let it grow, and let the corals grow, and they can define their own territories for now. This section I set up to be frags originally is really growing in a well. Things are going really pretty much the way I want. We're getting close to having to move some corals around, but we're gonna let it fill in a little bit more before we do anything crazy. The other big colonies of Monty's up top are really doing great. They're growing fast, they're coloring up nicely, except for this stupid Spungoda. Um, it's stays brown, it's super annoying. I'll zoom in. The only real cool thing about it, you can see it on the left, is that under this kind of purplish light I have, it, that brown coral, what it would normally be, looks purple, so it actually looks really nice under this lighting. But yeah, I wanna get the greens out, and I think the way I get my greens out is to get my alk up, which probably means I need to get rid of some Monty's, or get a new calcium reactor, odds are I'll get the calcium reactor before I limit myself on keeping coral. This little section's doing great right here. I added this green neon hammer here. This is a really nice hammer, but it works great because it kind of jets out out of the back, kind of fills that space. But because it's just a single head right now, it's not shadowing everything below it very much, so it's really working out well. The gold leptos below it are growing fantastic. So I'm getting a ton of growth out of those guys. Those are in just the perfect spot. The neon cabbage leather is growing slowly, but it's in a really tough neighborhood just handling it. It's between big leathers that smother it out. It's got that hide. So it's really doing good, all things considered right there. If you remember, I had that blue hole I had to fill and I put the green sinularia there. It is growing like gangbusters. It's loving that spot. It's filling that spot in. It's doing fantastic there. The big clam continues to grow and thrive. The clowns still live on it. It really is a great thing. Right next to it's that big bubble. As you can see, I'm just running out of space and the bubble's not even really fully open yet. I mean, this thing doubles in size when the lights are fully on and it's fully happy. It's insanely big. It's time to pick winners and losers and this UF oh, Scully's a loser. It won't get happy here, so we're gonna pull it right after this video. We'll put it in the frag tank downstairs where it's just gonna have hopefully better conditions where it can get happy, although I've got another reefer who has asked for it, so I might just let it go. The green Fabia I bought that I was hoping would turn into a tricolor because of the little bits of yellow on the top is, well, turning more purple. The, the eyes were purple, it had the green on the outside. Now it's all turning purple. I'm not sure where this color is gonna land on this coral, so we'll just have to watch it and see. One of the big winners is Crazy T Monipora. This is a coral I have had for a couple years now. I bought it with another reefer. We bought basically one frag, cut it in half so we could each have a piece. If you're not familiar with Crazy T, this is a stupidly expensive Monipora. They're like 300 bucks. And most of the time I've had this coral, I've been really disappointed with it. I had it in my Nano. It just put off this like red color. It looked great, but not $300 great. 
Um, when I put it in the 210, it just never got happy. It was, I just couldn't find a lighting position that it loved. Well, down here on the bottom in the light, right where it is, it looks exactly like Crazy T is supposed to look. So I'm really hoping this grows big and it has been growing really well. I'm loving the colors. So this Crazy T is doing great right here. My formerly gold hammers are actually turning gold again. This is pretty cool. I'm not gonna hold my breath that we'll get the color we used to have, but hey, it's going in the right direction. In fact, the lighting changes I've made have paid huge dividends for this lower section of the tank. The frog spawns are really opening up, coloring up nicely, and then there's all of that gold-ish frogs or hammer that's really looking good. I mean, we're getting some kind of gold on the stem of this green. These will be those Aussie ones. So this whole section is doing fantastic. It was getting overgrown from the set before. I have made those lighting adjustments and now it's doing beautifully. All of this green hammer used to be one big colony. I came home about a month ago and it was all laying down here on the ground. It was getting really close to my acanthophilia and I do not want that damaging my acanthophilia. Um, when I picked it up, it broke. So I used this opportunity to kind of break it up and this is the same stuff we just saw a minute ago above the hide. And I broke it up, re-glued it on, and now it fills this area out really nicely. It's got a place to grow. It's able to utilize the light properly. It should work out really well. And then it's opened up lighting for this frog spawn down below. The gold frog spawn continues to do great. I'm probably gonna be fragging that out here pretty soon. The huge toadstool sitting next to it is a long tentacle. It doesn't show in the lighting now, but when it's more white light, I look at this as more like a kaleidoscope. It's pretty cool because you see all of the pinks that are naturally in the coral, but you get the reflection from the blue. So it's like this multicolor leather, even though it's kind of a solid color on its own. And it's just the weird way that it reflects the light. It's a really cool leather. And this one will get be getting fragged as well whenever I get everything done so I can do my big leather fragging event because that's gotta happen. The pallies continue to do well. The grandis are getting kind of overgrown by the toadstool next to it. Part of the reason we need to frag it, we've got these teal mushrooms moving in, which is a major problem. I'm not sure how I'm gonna solve yet. But in back, we've got that John Deere Lepto doing good. I've got some Fabia sitting there next to the Gorg. It's growing really well and so far it's growing good enough that I'm not worried too much about anything getting overgrown. We'll see how that works out long term. And there's your quick and dirty 210 update. We'll try to get you a better one here soon. But we got big things coming. Monday I'm going to go shoot a video with Biggs Lagoon. They're starting up a new store in Firestone, Colorado, which is set to open on July 17th. So I am really looking forward to that. So Monday, I'll be there checking out their store. I'm gonna do a video on it because I love the guys at Big Lagoon. They are my kind of people. They're guys who got into this as hobbyists. They're following their dreams. They're trying to turn their dreams into a job. I cannot respect that more in a person. So I'm really looking forward to that. So, thank you for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys at Biggs Lagoon.